Well, this is going to be the new global leader for peace and prosperity throughout the world. Putin the cat. Smart as the pharaoh and uh, the Sphinx of Egypt, right? Anyway, cats are smarter than you think. They, they know, they have instincts, something people don't have. Uh, I want to go into something about uh, Major Anatoly Galitsyn. And actually, I have some books by him from way back. Uh, New Lies for Old, which actually is a collection of a series of memoranda to the CIA. It was published in the early 1980s, I think in 1984, but the last memoranda to the CIA is actually dated 1980, and a lot of it's from 1970s. He talks about the upcoming dissolution of the Soviet Union, the, uh, the fall of the Berlin, Berlin Wall, the reunification of Germany. Glasnost, a new wake, awakening, perestroika, a new restructuring, solidarity in Poland. He talks about this years before it happened. So, <laughs> you know, unlike the rest of them you see, this guy's not alternative media. He's former KGB and he's one of the honest ones. He's a major. And he said there was two people, there would be people that come after him to discredit him. And actually, that's what happened. There was like the two Olegs. I forgot what the hell their names were. It was like Oleg this and Oleg that. It's like they got. They were generals, supposedly, in the former KGB. And they get paid like, you know, a couple hundred thousand dollars to go talk at a college someplace. You know? Whereas Galitzin has to be in hiding, right? He had to be in hiding. Uh, you can tell who the truth is coming from, you know? The, the heavy financing, the heavy advertising, the. Uh, the big media blitz with all the, you know, like Alex Jones, somebody with a lot of money behind him, in a lot of ways, spy advertising. Uh, you know, David Icke, who gets, you know, $50 a head to talk in front of some people about lizard people. Um, the true guys, you don't hear about, and that's Major Anatoly Galitzin. But he's been talking about this stuff a long time, you know. Actually, Jim Angleton of the CAA used to know, uh, used to be very much attuned to him. And it changed later, mainly under the Clinton administration. Anyway. But I want to get into what he talks about for the future because this is where I see people are getting scammed and I'm like, you know, damn it, nobody's... Some people are getting it, some people aren't. Some people just don't want to hear it. But what the long-range plan is basically to bring down the United States on a level playing field and bring up the rest of the world. We'll have an elite and an underclass, a very large underclass. And what's going to happen... In the United States, it's planned that there's going to be total financial collapse in the West and that there will be um, an introduction of a type of hybrid communism that's combined with some capitalism with a human face. And basically, if you look how things are being played even in the major media, you know, even in the major media in the United States, Putin is actually, Vladimir Putin, who is actually part of the New World Order except of a different flavor, uh, he's being portrayed in a, almost in a good light, you know? It's almost like the major media wants you to reject their system. And it's not the system that's the problem. It's the fact that we aren't implementing the system. We have violations of the Bill of Rights all the time through spy agencies and things like that. And we also have violations of our money itself through the Federal Reserve because Congress is the only one authorized to coin money. But now we have other uh, bodies that are just being, you know, subcontracted to, I guess you want to call it. <laughs> Congress subcontracted that task to the Federal Reserve, which is ridiculous. Um, and it's almost like the same kind of game. You know, you can almost see the same type of thing that even happened in Vietnam. The elite wanted us to get involved in Vietnam. Then the elite, through the major media, created the counterculture to help bring down the American system to make it look like it's impossible to fight communism because nobody, you know, we only fought it halfway, that type of stuff. And they wanted you to turn against your own way of life, which is, and when I'm talking about the American way of life, I'm not talking about worshiping banksters or something or materialism and all that type of stuff. I'm talking about the actual division of power in the Constitution where not, no, no governmental body gets too much power and especially the first 10 amendments to the Constitution, the Bill of Rights. The Bill of Rights actually separates the Americans, the United States of America, from everybody else in the world because that document is unique. It's actually 
doesn't grant us our rights, but it, it's a it's an actual law of the land that says what our rights are, and even the Tenth Amendment to the Constitution says that there's other rights that we have that are not even enumerated in the Bill of Rights, and that we have those. We have those other innate rights. So it pretty much covers every damn thing there is. And there's no other country around in the world that has it spelled out like the Bill of Rights. So what the elite wants you to do is to reject this, you know, in favor of you know, going to the other side of the, of the world, which has the grass is greener and all this type of stuff. So, the Major Galitzin, who's been correct almost 100% of the time, he's, he's been about way over 90% correct, at least. At least. And nobody could say that. I mean, not Alex, you know, Alex Jones is a, you know, a fear monger, you know. He doesn't tell you ahead. You know, he's been wrong about many things. He doesn't predict into the future. Uh, and Major Galitzin doesn't, but he understands what the strategy is. The East and the West have always been working together. But, you know, the problem is this, and this is just plain common sense. They are their own gang unto themselves, and they will stick each other in the back if given the opportunity. They work together when it's beneficial to both. Uh, at some point in time, actually, leaders behind the scenes in Russia will stick it to the West if they see them down they will kick them hard. You know, if there's a financial collapse that goes worse than the elite expected to happen, than the Western elite expected to happen, maybe it's planned, the, the uh, people maybe behind the scenes in Russia will do something militarily against the United States at that time. And that's something that Major Galitzin alludes to. He's alluded to this, to this for years. But it looks like Everything he said is exactly accurate. And this is one of the reasons you're seeing um, the United States lose some of its, you know, luster, luster because um, it's being done on purpose. It's being done on purpose. The elite are actually creating the um, counter-revolution, whatever the hell you want to call it, in the United States because they want change. They don't want the Bill of Rights. They don't want the Constitution. They want to bring about almost like a counter-revolution to bring about change. The Hegelian concept, right? I mean, it's old as that, right? Or even older. I mean, you can actually go back to many plots during the Roman times that it's the same type of thing. But, you know, do not be, get behind a strong leader. Even if, say, Putin was exactly what some people think he's about, which I say he's not. He's loaded and he's young and power hungry. But say he was a very upright leader. Say he was. Let's just make the assumption. Well, you can look back in the time of Rome when actually Julius Caesar, after Julius Caesar was murdered, we had Caius Octavius Augustus was the emperor. And actually he was a good emperor for many years. But you know, it's like we, the system got thrown out. The Roman Republic got thrown out. And it's like you don't want to throw out the system in favor of a good leader, even if the leader is good. Because as soon as he dies and he becomes replaced, you don't know what the hell you're going to get. And that's the problem. That's the problem. So, I mean, get people get behind. And actually, I don't see Putin as this anyway, because he's totally in cahoots with the New World Order anyway. It's just He's just playing a game. And a game is going to be East against West with not the leaders suffering, Oh, it's going to be the people suffering. So, you know, and I'm going to say, here's the solution to it. Actually, you do have a, a, a power to do something about it. And actually, every time you even transact something, um, to actually make sure you transact and whatever you buy is something that's not fluff, actually that makes a difference even in the overall steering of how the direction of the country goes. You know, if we become a, you know, as the Russians accuse us of sometimes in the United States of being a, superfluous and corrupt and all this type of stuff. If we go back to the old American way of uh, toughness, austerity, hard work, and prosperity and laissez-faire capitalism, there isn't a damn thing, any kind of, com there's no way, possible way any kind of communist system could get a foothold in that. It's only when Americans get lazy <laughs> or they expect they're going to have a good, strong leader to take care of their problems. I elected this guy. And that, you can almost call it that way even with Ron Paul. Say Ron Paul was really great. Say he was a powerful leader. You don't want to do that. You want to, Every American wants to stand on their own two feet, make their own decisions, and be as independent as possible. That is actually 
what gave birth to the Roman Republic so many centuries ago. And actually, that's actually what made Rome, up to that point, to be the greatest society that the earth has ever seen, even though it's got some problems with it. It happened to be the most fair and just society going. You know, the Roman law and the Roman, Roman transportation, Roman communications and Roman aqueducts and all the engineering achievements. But, you know, it's just the fact that you don't want to elect a strong leader, even if the guy is a good guy. You don't care about it. You don't want that kind of principle installed. You want to stick with the Constitution in a Bill of, Life, Bill of Rights and the Law of the Land, whereas everybody is an individual and a, an autonomous you know, entity unto itself, an individual. You have individual rights. There's no such thing as, uh, you know, if you're going to give up your freedoms for the state, it has to be a willingness to do so to defend your own country. Otherwise, no go, no go. So, I mean, that's the hallmarks of the actual American principles. And actually, that's the hallmarks of the Roman Republic principles that actually made it so great that even when they were on the ropes against Hannibal, and Hannibal destroyed the greatest army they ever fielded up until that time, in a matter of a few hours, they still fought him for decades thereafter. Their sons were fighting him after, you know, the fathers were too old to do it. I mean, that's exactly what happened. That's what ha exactly what happened. With that type of toughness, you're never going to see a problem with you know, the spread of communism in the United States. But the problem is that um, superfluous uh, garbage, and, you know, Russians are true about, you know, truthfully criticize the United States about that, coming from Hollywood and people giving money to that kind of garbage, uh, actually uh, creates the whole problem in the first place. So getting right down to nuts and bolts is actually something that's going to make the big difference between, um, you know, surviving in the uh, true American way or going down the tubes and uh, getting taken over by the New World Order. That's really what it's going to come down to. Actually, small individual efforts make the big deal. And you don't have to be like a total survivalist and panicking every two seconds like Alex Jones wants you to do. That guy's, uh, that guy's got you got people on edge every single day and he gets them emotionally worked up for nothing. Uh, you know, just go on with your actual day-to-day -day activities, but it's almost like you want to be more austere and um, more level-headed in your decisions, in your economic purchasing, what you do. You know, you want to do a little bit of storing food if there's ever a problem, that type of stuff. But the long-range goal, and I'll state this again, what Major Anatoly Galitzin says is that when the West is finally financially collapsed. It's a plan, but maybe it's not going to go to the exact plan that the, the Western leaders want, and it might get stuck in the back by the Russian leaders behind the scenes. Uh, the plan is to bring down the whole financial system, and then people will want to clamor for a type of communism with a little bit of capitalism with a human face, and then the elite will have total control. That's what they're looking to do, and that's what Major Galitzin says, and that's, I'll tell you what, He's dead on accurate. He's never. The guy's been way more accurate than any of these uh, alternative, you know, major. They're, they're like garbage. I mean, I can't stand these guys half the time. I mean, I see. I can name a gazillion of them. Some of them are pastors and everything else. They're all bullshit. Major Glitzen has been right, and uh, you know, I've been I've been actually studying this since the '80s. So I mean, I've seen he's been right. I've seen he's been right, and I cross-reference this stuff, and I can go on about this crap for hours. If you want to look at a video I talked about, uh, the Georgia Guidestones, I'll put a link down in the info box, and you can look at that, and how it's even uh, tied in with uh, the fall of the Soviet Union, Yeltsin, and Gorbachev, and everything else. It's like the East and West leaders have always worked together, and they're against the, the people in Russia, and they're against the people in the United States. That's what's going on. And I think that it is part of the global elite's plan to basically tarnish the United States to bring it down. That's why you're starting to even see in the major media a lot of good reports about Vladimir Putin and a lot of stuff covered up about him that's pretty damn bad. He's, he's, no, he's, he's just as bad as anybody in the West. And, you know, people vehemently get pissed off at that, but it's a fact. It's a fact. He's a bad guy, man. He's a bad guy. I don't know what the hell to tell you. You know, I wish, you know, Russians could have some power to do... And, you know, actually, if there was ever a military conflict between Russia and the United States, what I think is 
that Russia probably has a lot more secret weapons that are extremely powerful that may be ahead of what's in the United States. And it would not be, well, it wouldn't be a good outcome no matter how it came out, of course, because it would be a warfare. But, um, you know, I'll tell you one thing. You know what Russia is noted for? Engineers, mathematicians, especially engineers. Very, very smart people, engineers. You know, like in Italy, they might call them professors, professores. Everybody's a professor. In the United States, it's more about money. I'm a financial guy. I got all money, 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 money. But in Russia, it's more about engineers. That's one of the things that Russians are really noted for, you know. And uh, if there's anybody that could have perfected some very high-end technology, I, I think it would be them. So, you know, I tell you one thing. Um, if there ever is a conflict between the East and the West, um, I would not be so confident that the United States is going to come out ahead. Because... Um, you know, from one, all my readings way back, and I haven't read about a lot of this stuff in a long time, there is a lot, despite the outward uh, fall of the conventional armies in Russia and they were in the 90s and they couldn't pay the electric bill on a Navy yard and all this kind of garbage, they concentrate most of their money on high-tech stuff. <clears throat> and I think they got a lot of it. I think they got a lot of it. So, uh, and um, very disciplined, too. Very disciplined. But, you know... The one thing that's actually going to create the problem for the New World Order is if both the American people, Chinese people, and Russian people wake up that it's not like we're not against each other as a country. We're against the, the elite. And we're against their rackets. You know? I mean, it would be nice if all the Russians could have AK-47s and stuff like that and all the vodka they can drink and uh, Euro motorcycles and stuff like that that run on hemp oil. And uh, attack the bad guys. I mean, that would be cool. But, you know, that's a pipe dream. <laughs> I mean, that would be pretty cool, you know. I mean, if you've got the, you know, the FSB trying to, some do, you know, somebody comes out with some information that exposes corruption in the state. And uh, some good old boys from Russia could take care of that crap and protect the guy that's exposing the uh, people that are doing the corruption in the state. Oh, that would be nice. But, you know, they ain't got the power to do that. We got the power to do that in the United States, though. We got the power to do that in the United States. Actually, if you look back to Athens, Tennessee, um, that happened already <laughs> with World War II veterans, you know. So, I mean, I don't want to say to go that far, but, you know, the one thing is to just make sure you stay with the Bill of Rights and don't think about getting behind strong political leaders as a freaking solution. And that includes Ron Paul, Rand Paul, or whatever. You know what I mean? I, I personally think those guys are playing almost with the New World Order, the elite, because if they really were a thorn in the side to the establishment, they'd be dead. I mean, there's so many different ways that I knew way back even in the 1970s, they got ways to kill people that make it look like natural causes. They had that back in the 70s and 80s. Oh, it's been developed a long time ago. I mean, if they wanted, they wouldn't have to like, you know, I mean, they talk about the CIA with the heart attack gun, if you heard of that garbage, you know. They got stuff way better than that. I mean, they can have somebody like to give them a handshake and they have pancreatic cancer or liver cancer and they die in a few a few months later and they never knew what the hell hit them. You know? And, you know, the political leader's out of the way. And what do you do? What do you do, right? That's why I don't really think Ron Paul and Rand Paul and those people like that are really um, a thorn in the side to the elite because if they were, they'd be out of the way. They're playing a game all along with the thing. They're offering, like, token resistance token resistance so the only way you can really fight this is to be as individualistic as possible and independent as possible that will actually fight communism and actually to stick with the bill of rights more than anything you know remember, remember that's the law of the land and if they freaking negate that as a law of the land well as far as I'm concerned it's still the law of the land that's all there is to it it's not going to change I don't give a shit if the United States got taken over by some global government or whatever the hell it is. If they say the new Bill of Rights is no longer the law of the land, bullshit, bullshit. But you know, on the other side of it, you got to be stealthy too. You got to be stealthy. So uh, just remember the words of Anatoly Galitsyn. The plan is to actually have the United States lose its luster, bring it down, and then collapse the financial system and then introduce communism, a type of hybrid communism that's combined with a little bit of capitalism, with a human face. 
That's the game plan. And that's one reason I'm saying don't get behind Vladimir Putin because he's part of it. He's part of it too. He's part of it too. They're scammers. All of them are. All of them are. The only thing you got is to make sure you stay as independent as possible and you know avoid the Hollywood fluff and the bullshit. You know, avoid it. Avoid it. So that's all I gotta say. Just remember Anatoly Galitsin because that major has been correct. Whereas almost everybody else has been wrong. He's been correct.